Hello everyone, I have here the 2021 LEGO Modular Building Collection Police Station. That's right, these modular buildings are no longer in the Creator Expert theme, instead they're under the 18 plus umbrella, something that LEGO came up with as part of their recent realization that adult fans of LEGO actually exist. They wanted to let us know that it is okay for us adults to buy LEGO, so they put the 18 plus designation on a bunch of new sets. Well, thank you, Lego, for your permission. Did not need it, but appreciate the recognition either way. This particular building is unique in that it is the first one to have a large structure right in the center and then a small structure to either side, a small little vertical sliver. Previously, they've done, of course, one single building taking up the entire 32 by 32 base plate, and then they've done half and half. But this is something a little bit different, and I appreciate that. The designers of these are always trying to come up with new ideas new ways to, to set their, their newest buildings apart with small details, different ways of using parts in interesting ways to create interesting textures. And another thing that I very much appreciate about this one that is pretty unique to it is the continuation of color around the sides. So sometimes they've done pretty good on the back, but they've never done this well around the sides. A lot of the modular buildings have looked actually kind of ugly around the sides because of all of the the parts that show through that are in different colors that are just designed to help with the interior details. So here we have a couple of headlight bricks that stick out the back, but that could easily be seen as just a vent. It doesn't get in the way. It doesn't make this look ugly. Like again, some of the buildings previously have, they've had camera unfriendly angles. Another thing that's really nice about this is with that continuous color there and even some intentional uh, outside texture added to it, you could easily use this as a corner unit, even though it's intended to be along a street. You can have buildings next to it, or you can not, if you so choose. You can leave this right on the corner, and it looks perfectly attractive. The set comes with five minifigures, and we'll look at them up close later on, but for now, let's focus on the details of the building. This is obviously a small newsstand booth that also sells some flowers, and there you see one of the new unique prints included for this set with the Donut Thief Still Hungry headline. Of course, all of these uh, modular buildings tend to have some story to go with them, so there's some donut theft going on with this one. As usual, we get a street lamp outside, and this is a new way of building some little topiaries or miniature trees using the small gear pieces. There's a stoop outside with some steps and also a couple of spots to hold on to the feet of minifigures. I'm glad they didn't just completely tile all of this over. Windows on the sides, like block style glass, they use the relatively new globe pieces with uh, clear minifig heads inside for the large lamps off to the side. The police sign is a print as well. And coming over to the other side, you get another one of those small trees, a bench, which is a fairly common thing to see out front or beside one of these modulars. And this little shop, the donut shop, has a beautiful awning with some new colors for a couple pieces. You got the the just regular flesh tone or now just plain nougat for a slope piece and a tile as well as a couple of new prints for the two by two tiles round tiles that is with the, the hole in the middle technic sized hole in the middle and some foliage some some vinery that grows up the side of the building here i think it looks much better from a distance than it does up close it's a very simple technique but i think this does a good job of approximating something like ivy growing up. I mean, the leaf shape is not perfect for ivy and all, but if you stand back a little bit and think of it as Lego, I think it gives a nice, you know, just, just a nice appearance and, and looks pretty appropriate. Here they start to demonstrate some, some designs with the undersides of the jumpers. I think they're trying to do a different texture there, also using some relatively recent, not completely new, but relatively recent corner arch pieces there that create a good little topper for the columns. Around the side here, you got some major, major prints. I was surprised to see that these are actually prints and not stickers because these are some big tiles. Tie back to the, the brick bank there. Appreciate that very, very much, as do I appreciate the copious amounts of sand green in this. A lot of people like sand green as a color and this has provided a lot more to the market. I look forward to more of those being 
easier to get on the market as well. And this small side part of the building, which is really not a separate thing, it's completely integrated into the main structure, but uh, it is finished off pretty well. And I'll start taking stuff apart so you can see everything. A couple little lamps here that are intended to illuminate the billboard, the sign. Those are done nicely with the small gem underneath. And then here's the uppermost floor with the bird outside. Hey, is, is the bird actually the donut thief? It does appear that is the case. Got some open Venetian blinds that are partially drawn up above using the kind of a step ladder, side ladder sort of pieces. And as usual, you have a roof area that is accessible to the minifigures in, in some way. And that is actually tiered this time. You got the, the uh, water pressure tank up there, which is kind of small for this size of building, but is a fine build and actually uses a recolored Monkey King uh, kind of hilt piece inside of there. It's an extra long one in dark gray. You've got access coming up over here also to the uppermost level, which just has an antenna grouping up there. It's just basically a, a miniature radio tower for comms to go out and come in. And the last detail on the roof is this air vent for, I guess, the central heating system, central climate system or something like that. Not the most shapely thing, but you get what it is just from looking at it. I think the most interesting things on the outside of this building are right here up at the top. So this introduces a new piece for 2021, that one by three uh, concave slope piece, uh, one by three by one, which is yeah, just something new and will be used a lot more. You also see it on the side here with the studs up and you'll be seeing that used a lot more in the future to be sure in many colors, but this is a major introduction to it. And underneath there, in the little insets, those are Lego Minecraft wolf heads upside down with no printing on them. So just one of those cases where the, the designer had the budget to get something unique and new for this set. And they, they try to do that whenever they can to come up with what they call nice part usage. And I think, I think this counts. I've already shown you the back overall, so now I'm gonna start taking levels off to show you the interior and we'll make connections to some exterior things as we go. Now in the official pictures that LEGO publishes, you always see these nice low minifig eye level views of minifigs doing things and it makes it look all very lively and all. But I think you deserve to know that in reality, you as a human being do not get those views because LEGO to get those pictures takes apart much of the building. Like they'll take off the entire front of the building just to get one single shot. We actual human beings who have built the set fully have to look from up above. Uh, fortunately, the designer tried to keep one of these, uh, one of these walls a little bit low. So you see this is all dipped down here, which allows you to get better access to get your fingers in there and also to just see with your eyes. But still, you have to really be looking down at everything here. And that is a little bit of a little bit of a downer to me personally uh, on, on most modular buildings, honestly. So this is the main lobby and that's the main reception and intake desk with a new print for the one by two slope piece for the rotary dial phone. Not the best production on that piece, but I do appreciate its existence and also the use of a, a black uh, traditional headset or handset piece. You got a rack of a whole two, well, one of them's in the hand of a cop right now, but a whole two radio walkie talkies. That's what you get for minifig accessories there. Clock up above, and that's the jail or holding cell. So the, uh, the sand green colored part of the building here. I mean, that's a four stud wide little sliver of space. So it's difficult to see down in there. It's very difficult to actually manipulate the space to put figure a figure or multiple figures in there and to get to a nice feature. So if I pull the, the bunk up here, the bed, bedding, underneath is a hole and there's a spoon down there because this is where a prisoner has been trying to dig out to escape the whole building. Looking on the outside then, that's where this comes in. That's where this crack comes in that has a fairly large opening and that's because the person is just about ready to break through the hole from inside the cell does continue as you're building this, you know that, but afterwards it kind of becomes hidden, but that does continue right up to here. 
outside the cell, there are some steps down that just take you directly to the base plate and to the outside door in the back. The main stairway, meanwhile, is one of my personal favorite features of the interior of the entire building, and it's very, very simple how it's done. It's just super effective. It's a, a row of regular bricks and some corner bricks that have been around for years and years and years attached directly to the wall. Now, that does not give you any studs for feet to be attached, but I think that's an okay compromise for such a simple and effective technique. They just use the relatively recent corner tiles to finish it off on the side. You don't really have handrails there, but I love this. It's, it looks pretty perfect to me. Another thing that I think looks pretty perfect is this new design for a water cooler. Half of it is built upside down, uses some studs on the side construction, and just all in all, it's very, very nice and not too big compared to minifigs. The donut shop next door is literally larger on the inside than it is on the outside, as if it was the TARDIS or something, because they have the wall that, you know, kicks in over here and gives you all that extra space. So there's a very, very nice display of all the products against the wall, a couple of, of uh, tiers of angled shelves that display the stuff very nicely to us. Got the small coffee maker off to the side, a classic style of cash register done in the sand green color. No printing on that or anything, but the shape tells you what it is. Some, uh, some paper cups upside down and just a very generous space for an employee or two, as well as a large, large counter. And there's even some counter space for customers, a little bit of stand up eating space there and plenty of room for customers to wait on the checkered floor. One level above the donut shop is this apartment with a rather cheap, flat and uncomfortable looking bed. But what I'm seeing here is that the person saved a lot of money by getting a cheap bed and put all that money into this very expensive luxury piece of AV equipment here. That's an all in one cabinet with a record player a radio and speakers all together. That is not cheap. On the other side is the kitchenette with some nice small builds for the counter and a little bit of drawers underneath. The sink has some studs on the side construction and you also have an oven with a stove top. There's no restroom to go with this apartment, which is fairly normal. I mean, there, there really isn't space for it. So I think it's okay. And then moving back to the actual police station. Okay, now we get into some stuff. Now we get into some, some useful stuff that, that makes sense and is really good use of the space. You got a couple of desks here for investigators. You got the new print for the typewriter here, which is good. And that one is produced well. Also this print in this case, this copy that I got for this phone looks much better than the one downstairs. Hopefully there's more consistency than that. And most of them that people will get will look like this. Got the sand green colors for the lampshades and the all important bulletin board, the cork board with all the notes and photographs and things and red string has to connect things. So that, that makes sense and is, is funny, but also uh, I'd say appropriate. There's a lot of empty space in here, a lot of unused space. You got just a, a little potted plant over here. And this is a spot where you get your mugshot taken. So you got the stand with the camera and there's the backdrop that the perp stands in front of. Now, you know how the ground level has the secret underneath the bed in the jail cell? Well, this level has a secret underneath a bed as well over here. And now I'm thinking the person may actually have chosen cheap bedding to make it easy for them to lift the thing up to get access to the donut shop down below. This is the donut thief's apartment. Finally, this is the topmost floor just by itself. This is where the stairway comes up and on the wall are a couple of plaques. And this just gives you a balcony slash mezzanine area with access to some rooms. So there are three doors. One goes off over here. You can take this off. That's just the bathroom. Okay, so the office actually has a bathroom. That's good. At least, at least there's one. The toilet is a nice shape, nice design. Doors open towards the inside, you do have toilet paper as well, so that's good. And then over here, this is the interrogation room. So you got a couple of seats, recording device, reel to reel style, audio only back over there has one single print down below that one by one tile in the middle. And that's it for the main part of the building and switching off to the side here, 
this just pulls off and it shows you part of the inside of the room on one side, which is a, an evidence locker, evidently. And there's the other side with just a couple more shelves. These are the three cop minifigs, and I didn't do research to find out exactly what era that type of uniform would have come from, but I'm guessing it would be right around the, the late 40s, possibly up to the early 50s, but more like the 40s, I'd say. Uh, highly romanticized in Hollywood, but just being real here, not a great era for the badge, I'm just saying. But fortunately, we're just dealing with toys here. Lego minifigs, I think they look pretty good as figures. They don't really stand out that much though. Uh, the black on dark blue, you know, doesn't give you much impact. I do like the gold bits. I do like the unique print for the torso on the left. And she also gets an alternate face. Here on the right is the donut shop employee with an empty carafe for some coffee. Maybe she was just cleaning it out or something. And on the left is the newsstand employee who, I don't know, there's just something about him that makes me think he could be the donut thief. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Is it, is it his face? Maybe it's, maybe it's the hat. I feel like somebody with that hat would listen to music a lot. You know, like maybe he's the one who lives in that apartment and he's the one who has that really, really nice piece of AV equipment. I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I'm just really jumping to conclusions here, but there's something about him that makes me not trust him. Makes me think that he might have like, I don't know, a stash of donuts just held somewhere. Now, it's been a while since I showed you a set with this many leftover pieces. Of course, they are all pretty small parts, but some of them are cool, including some existing prints. Be sure to hit pause if you're interested in looking at this more. So this cost me $200 US. And you know what? It comes with almost 400 more pieces than the corner garage, which cost the same amount. So the price to part ratio there is looking pretty nice. It's looking good compared to other members of, of the theme. It's actually one of the best price to part ratios that they've ever had in the modular line. And once you actually adjust for inflation, I think it may be the best. So value for your dollar here, I think is pretty good. It is expensive at $200, but this is one of the most massive uh, modular buildings that they've made. I believe it is the most massive that they've made on a 32 by 32 base plate. The, uh, the town hall was rather tall, but this has depth as well and thickness. To, to the whole thing, you only have a, a little strip, the, the consistent strip along the back that is completely blank with nothing on it is five studs back here. So I think you get a lot of stuff here. This thing really makes an impact. I personally think that it looks pretty good. My favorite part of it is this section over here. I think that's a brave choice of colors and it was executed really well. I also like the detailing here on the front. I like the fact that the sides looks so good and you can actually use this again as a as a corner unit that is practically revolutionary for the line i hope that they are able to actually do that with some consistency in the future and they might not always be able to do, to do that but at least getting close i think is really nice and i like the the vines here honestly there's something about this that lets me down just a little bit from a visual perspective it doesn't draw me in i don't find it to be that exciting that visually interesting and I, I put some thought into that because I've been thinking about that for, for a while. And it really, I believe, just comes down to how rectangular it is. Uh, this area, again, has nice colors and some, some curvature and such. But the main area of the main building, the tan section, and even with the sand green section over here, they're just so rectangular. You know, it's very just... <laughs> and that's just it. So it feels like it doesn't have as much soul as probably most of the modular buildings that they've done up to this point. In some ways, uh, uh, Corner Garage suffered from that as well, but at least it was an angled thing, which I think helped. And I also liked the color of it. I think I like the look of that one a little bit better than this, except for this section over here. Again, this, this, is, this little part is really nice. Technically, um, just in terms of techniques, completeness, um, smoothness, uh, lack of weird colors, lack of weird textures, open unfinished things inside or out, 
From a technical design perspective, I feel like this is one of the better ones that they've ever done in this series. I'm not saying it's one of my favorite of the modular buildings. Listen to my words there. The technical, the techniques used for this throughout, I think are amongst the best on the whole, when you put it all, all together, just with, with consistency. So I feel like the designer did a really, really good job with this. It just ended up being something that I personally am not as excited about, I'm not as happy about, just to look at, you know? I, I, I think, I think that, I think that's, that's fair, right? I'm not gonna like everything that LEGO does automatically. I also feel like this didn't come with enough minifigures. I mean, just five for a $200 three-story building? I think they could have put in a couple more, not even just one more, a couple more. would have added some more, some more life to this thing. Not, there are, not that there are great places to put them or anything, but you can always use more just generic city, you know, town folks, right? Um, little techniques up here are nice. I hope that we'll get more of that unprinted wolf head piece for folks who want to use that technique or something like it. Um, great to get <laughs> lots more sand green pieces, especially ones in just regular shapes, you know, just plain one by X bricks. Overall, I think it's just a good set. It gives you good value. It's just not one of my personal favorites. Let me know what you think though. Of course, I do have the pure build real time. It took about six hours. I was, I was trying to get it down to six hours and it took almost exactly six hours to build it. So it's actually split into three sessions, but it's all there. And I also have the speed build. If you don't want to spend six hours watching this or have it going in the background or something, you can see it in, in one relatively long sitting. You know, it's still a, a lot of, of stuff, a lot of building. So even at the highest speed that I've ever used in speeding up um, uh, uh, a time lapse, it still takes you a, a couple minutes, a couple minutes. So yeah, that's about it. Uh, all I have to say about this one, looking forward to hearing what you all think about it. Let me know if there's anything that you would like me to follow up on uh, about this and I'll keep bringing you more reviews and talk to you again soon.